Sarah Lockwood Winchester was an American heiress who amassed great wealth after the death of her husband, William Ward Winchester, and her mother-in-law, Jane Ellen Hope. Her inheritance included $20 million, over $500 million today, as well as a 50% holding in the Winchester Repeating Arms Company, which made her one of the wealthiest women in the world at the time. In 1886, Edward Rambo, a San Francisco agent for the Winchester Repeating Arms Company, took Winchester on a tour of the Santa Clara Valley to look for a home. He showed her a 45-acre ranch for sale that was located near San Jose. She purchased the property from John Hamm, which included a two-story, eight-room farmhouse. Since the property reminded her of Lanata Alaviza from the Basque area, she named her new home Lanata Villa. After moving into her new residence, Sarah began to enlarge the farmhouse, a process that would take up to 25 years. When the 1906 San Francisco earthquake hit, the Lanata Villa was severely damaged. Though there are rumors that Winchester was trapped in the San Jose home, there is no evidence that she was there. The seven-story tower and most of the chimneys collapsed. One entire wing was destroyed along with the third and fourth story additions. Winchester had the rubble removed but had little more done to the property after the earthquake. This left doors that opened to nothing, where balconies had once been, pipes that were protruding from what were once window boxes, and staircases that once led to upper floors, ending suddenly. After 1910, due to failing health, Winchester did not work on the San Jose home except for odd maintenance jobs. Sarah died at Lanata Villa on September 5, 1922, of heart failure. A service was held in Palo Alto, California, and her remains lay at Alta Mesa Cemetery until they were transferred, along with those of her sister, to New Haven, Connecticut. When Sarah died in 1922, the house had 160 rooms, 2,000 doors, 10,000 windows, 47 stairways, 47 fireplaces, 13 bathrooms, and 6 kitchens. The house became a tourist attraction nine months after Winchester's death in 1922. The house was in disrepair and considered to be of no monetary value. A group of investors purchased the property, subsequently leasing the house to John and Mamie Brown, who turned it into an attraction. They later purchased the house in 1931. The first tour guide of the house was Mamie Brown. Past neighbors, friends, and workers for Winchester were distressed when they read about superstitious claims being made about the house and Winchester and were upset the Browns were making money off falsehoods. In 1924, Harry Houdini briefly visited the house and was reportedly impressed by its unusual layout and architectural novelties, but could not make a detailed investigation because of more pressing engagements. According to some accounts, Houdini suggested tour operators employ Winchester Mystery House as a promotional name for the property. When Keith Kittle, a past Disneyland employee, became the general manager in 1973, the house was in poor shape. He had the house renovated in the 1970s and 1980s and added a Winchester Rifle Museum. He sought historical landmark status and began an advertising campaign that included large billboards along the highways. The billboards feature a silhouetted house with implications that a ghost encounter was possible. Attendance increased as he played off the history and superstition that was already circulating. Myths around her decision to move from the East Coast to California are thought to have originated from author Susie Smith in her book Prominent American Ghosts, published in 1967. In Smith's version of events, Winchester visited a medium in Boston named Adam Coons who told her that she and her family were being haunted by the ghosts of people killed by Winchester rifles, that she must construct a house for these ghosts, and that she must never complete the project. This assertion of Winchester meeting with a medium has been repeated in brochures and articles ever since, although there is no evidence that Sarah ever visited with a medium named Adam Coons. Beginning around 1895, Sarah started appearing in newspapers. The articles in these local papers were filled with speculation about Winchester and the ongoing construction of her San Jose home. 
Her lack of interaction with neighbors and the known fact that her money came from the firearms industry fed into a superstitious narrative despite large, ornate homes being commonly built by the wealthy. The newspapers declared that the reason that the construction was ongoing was that Winchester feared she would have bad luck if the construction would stop. This theory eventually grew into stories that she believed she would die if construction stopped. The belief that Winchester built her house in its strange, maze-like manner to confuse and keep spirits from harming her and that her sanity was questionable started in the mid-1890s and has grown in scale past her death. The doors and windows that open to nothing, the unusually shallow stairs, the stairs that end in a ceiling, interior barred windows and trap doors in the floor are used to confirm Winchester's spirituality and poor state of mind. But these house oddities have simple explanations. The barred windows were previously exterior windows that were blocked off as the house additions grew. The doors and windows that opened to nothing were a result of the 1906 earthquake and the severe damage that happened to the house. The small steps were built because of Winchester's declining health. The trap doors were built in a greenhouse room where excess water could run and be piped to an outdoor garden. The tower bell was used to call workmen and to serve as a fire alarm on the property. According to Joe Nichol, fanciful claims later arose that it was used to summon spirits. The claims that local residents heard ghostly music coming from the house are explained by the fact that Winchester often played the pump organ in the grand ballroom when she was unable to sleep. The most common belief that persists today regarding Sarah's house building was that she felt tremendous guilt resulting from all the deaths caused by Winchester rifles and from inheriting so much money from the arms company. However, it is unlikely Winchester had any guilt, since in the 1800s the Winchester Repeating Arms Company was seen as a success, and weapons were viewed as a necessity for survival. As Sarah aged, particularly after 1900 as her health issues grew worse, which included arthritis, missing teeth, and neuritis, she became more private and reclusive. This reluctance to appear in public or to socialize with her peers gave her a mysterious reputation feeding the gossip in the community and local newspapers which fueled the rumor that she was superstitious. Sarah S. Companion of many years, Miss Henrietta Severs stated Sarah had no superstitious beliefs. Sarah S. Relatives, employees and gardeners never made claims that she was superstitious, guilt-ridden or crazed. According to the lore, architectural features such as 13 bedrooms, 13 bathrooms, and 13 windows in certain rooms are due to Winchester's apparent fascination with the number 13. However, according to Carpenter James Perkins, these and the more irregular features, which have made the house a world-famed oddity, were built after Mrs. Winchester's death. Sarah's staff, who spent every day with her, stated she had no interest in seances and there is no record of them being held in the house. Nevertheless, a false urban legend has arisen claiming she held nightly seances in the blue room or in a closet by herself from midnight until 2 in the morning, talking to ghosts about what construction should be accomplished the following day. In addition to the lack of records found about seances at the Winchester house, the closet seances were unlikely given that they were usually social events and not done by individuals and records show that the blue room was the gardener's bedroom. Today, the house is owned and operated by Winchester Mystery House, LLC, which is a private company that represents the descendants of the Brown family. Tours of the house are given daily throughout the year with the exception of Christmas Day.